Hey everybody, my name is Ed. Okay, so we're going to do another random comics walkthrough. This one's going to be uh, Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. number two. Now, this physical thing I have here was published in uh, 1984, but they're basically reprints uh, of stories that Jim Steranko did for Marvel uh, back in 1986 for, um, yeah, for, for Nick Fury. Uh, this particular... Well, just, just to back up a little bit, uh, during the like mid-80s or so, uh, the direct sales market was starting to kind of take over as the main uh, way that comics were being uh, sold. It hadn't quite taken over uh, yet, but I think Marvel and DC were kind of experimenting with different things as far as having a few comics that just went out to direct sales only. And then they were also doing a lot of like reprints. So like DC was doing a lot of their Neil Adams, um, Dead Man and Green Lantern and Green Arrow stuff. Uh, Marvel was putting out stuff like this. They were doing reprints of the Micronauts of all things. Back here, there's an ad for, uh, for Moon Knight. And these were like reprints from uh, a backup series that Moon Knight had in the Rampaging Hulk uh, magazine. So... So that's kind of what's going on. This particular um, series, there are only two of them. There was issue one and issue two. And it's kind of, uh, <clears throat> it was kind of haphazard. And it's kind of arbitrary. Um, the stories weren't printed in chronological order. They're all kind of like mixed up, the, the few that they did. They don't give you any information of which comic they originally appeared in. You don't get anything in a legal matter. You don't get anything that says originally printed as. And and like I said, it, it's, it's kind of haphazard. Tom DeFalco was the reprint editor, it says here. So I don't know if he was told to, hey, just you know, get a couple things out uh, just so we have something on the shelves. Uh, you know, I don't know. There's there's an editorial here by Archie Goodwin, and he doesn't really give any real information. He just talks about uh, starting work at Marvel during 1968, and, you know, Jim Steranko's a great guy, but he really doesn't go into any sort of detail about, you know, why Jim Steranko is uh, a great artist or why these stories were influential or or what makes Jim Steranko great or anything like that. But um, but I did a little research as far as where these particular stories go. <clears throat> so I come from. So just to kind to of, uh, just you know just to kind of get into it, this cover here. This cover here is a pretty. Excuse me. I'll take a tip of, uh, sip of tea here. This particular uh, cover here is kind of famous, kind of semi-famous. If you ever Google like Jim Steranko art, uh, this cover almost comes up all, all the time. Uh, the only other cover that's even more famous is probably, let me find it here. It's probably this one here. You know, these are, this is probably the most iconic um, Jim Steranko, Nick Fury cover. I, that you know it's out there and this was probably probably number two uh, it's probably it's pretty interesting it looks like um, it looks pretty Wally Wood influenced it looks like it's something that could have been on the cover of like weird science from uh, from the 50s or something like that uh, but this cover is originally from uh, Nick Fury Agent of Shield number six this back cover with all this kind of Salvador Dali stuff is from uh, number seven, and the stories that are inside are from the first story is from Shield, the Nick Fury Agent of Shield number five. Then the second story is from number uh, three, and then the last story is the second part of a story that originally came out in Strange Tales number one hundred and fifty-eight. So, <clears throat> just sort of get into it. We got whatever happened to Scorpio, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, sorry about all this coughing. And we wake up in the morning with Nick Fury and his girlfriend, uh, Val Contessa something or another. And he tells you he's got to leave to go run some errands. And he goes to this key making shop and he talks to his old friend, the key maker. <clears throat> he's asking him if he's got some information on an old case he's working on. Key master knows what he's talking about, but he doesn't have tons of information for him. Then you get this page with this uh, kind of collage going on, 
and we're just basically just talking about the cool gear that Nick Fury has in his car. This is something that was uh, happening a lot. Uh, Jim Steranko did this a lot. Uh, Jack Kirby in the mid late sixties was doing it more and more using these kind of photo collages and blah 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 Nick Fury goes to this uh, warehouse uh, he's in his flying car somebody attacks him and here you get this kind of uh, kind of interesting sort of juxtaposition this sort of cinematic art going on where you see the one frame then you see another then he flex frame then another and the action is getting closer and closer and closer meanwhile in the background you got these strange energy waves and it looks like this kind of psychedelic uh, design going on here. So this is the bad guy. He's got his cosmic key here. Blah blah blah. Knocks Nick Fury art. You got this thing going on here. Very, very pop art. Very Andy Warhol. You know. And this is the bad guy, Scorpio. <coughs> Scorpio ties him down. Makes a fake mask so he can disguise himself as Nick Fury. And here's the old man. He's gonna go out and get some information or whatever. He's creeping around. Here's Nick, here's Scorpio disguised as Nick Fury waking his way into Shield headquarters. Today at Shield headquarters, they're going to test some LMDs. For people who don't know, LMDs are kind of like androids that uh, Shield uses. And what happens here is now here's evil Scorpio pretending to be Nick Fury, but the real Nick Fury is in the LMD suit. And here, let's look at this this crazy page here. This is supposed to be some sort of uh, obstacle course, but you know, just dig all this you know way out design and arbitrary shapes are going on here. Very again, pop art, very psychedelic inf influenced, and supposedly uh, Scorpio's drug Nick, so he can't use his voice, so he just has to run the obstacle course. Blah 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 blah. He tries to fight back, tries to strike, uh, get at Scorpio in the observation deck. Here's the old man sneaking into the headquarters. More fight stuff going on. All right, here's Val. She's pulled out her gun. Fight keeps going on. The old man walks in into the middle of the fight, and just as Val fires, she hits the old man. She, she's trying to hit what she thinks is the LMD. She doesn't know that's really Nick. So the old man walking in the middle of the fight basically saves Nick's life. <coughs> At this point, here, you know, here she is. This is supposed to be her looking in sorrow and shame, I guess. Anyway, Nick's voice has come back. <coughs> and he's chasing down Scorpio. Scorpio's mask falls off. Nick recognizes him. He says, you! And then... <coughs> Scorpio jumps out a window as he's being shot at and he falls into the river and supposedly that's the end of him. Now they actually followed up on this story in an issue of the Avengers that came out not very long ago after that. I can't remember the exact issue number. It was like issue number 92 or 93 or something like that. And they established that uh, the Scorpio was really Nick Fury's long lost brother. And not only that, he was part of an international crime organization called the Zodiac, and all the, <coughs> excuse me, bad guys had, uh, their code names were, of course, named after the various Zodiac signs and things. All right, this here looks like it's a page out of those Marvel handbooks that came out in the early 80s. Here's some covers again. <coughs> various things from Strange Tales, which was a comic that Nick Fury uh, shared with Doctor Strange. And then, of course, here's one of the Nick Fury Shield solo uh, titles. And again, none of these stories, none of these covers match any of the stories that are actually in this particular uh, reprint edition. So I don't know what's going on with that. All right. Okay, so here's the next story. Okay. And we get, the, you know, there's this kind of moody, gothic setting here. Some sort of castle in the background. And here's the title. Dark Moon Rise, Hellhound Kill. And you kind of see somebody in the letters kind of running away, right? And then 
and that person kind of falls over and he ends up dead. Okay, and now here we're gonna go back up to the castle, right? And so basically, Nick has gotten some uh, word from somebody he knows. Okay, come investigate this crazy stuff going on at the old spooky castle. And here's some people at the old spooky castle. Hey, we're gonna raise a seance because the guy used to own this castle. Uh, some crazy shit was going on. And he died and blah, 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 whatever. Old spooky castle. And <clears throat> of this I thought was interesting. Well, you know what, I'm gonna skip that because I, I don't know enough to comment on it. This guy's name is something like, uh, uh, what the fuck, Mycroft or whatever. Right? And just the way the character's drawn, I wonder if that's supposed to be a kind of an homage to like HP Lovecraft, maybe? I don't know, I might be reading too much into it. I mean, the whole story is just basically spooky ghost story, Hounds or Baskerville type, type of thing. So anyway, oh, and I should mention that this lady here is blind, so that's going to come into the story a little bit later. But anyway, th things, spooky things are going on, suits her armor are falling over, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> the old man basically tells a story about, you know, this guy, his big dog, his brother's trying to get after his wife, and there's a big fight, and, you know, everybody dies, and... And now the castle's haunted or something, maybe. All right, Nick's free. He's not sure he really believes it, but okay. So anywhere they're having a seance here, and you get this kind of nice panel progression, right? And then a ghost shows up, and he has a fight with Nick Fury. And Nick Fury's, uh, you know, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. And blah, 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 guy disappears. And then there's like, oh... Rachel, or whatever her name has, has wandered out into the courtyard. So Nick, for some reason, <coughs> decides the best thing to do is to jump out the window to catch up with her. Okay, <laughs> whatever. And then we get this nice double page spread here. Hellhound of Ravenlock. Woo! And here comes one of the dogs. And Nick's trying to shoot at the dog, but his gun has no effect. And blah, 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 he's bandaging up his hands, yada, yada, yada. And they, uh, he's walking around with the blind girl. And then they find out there's secret passages and things in there. And out comes this dude, you little fool, you're going to ruin it all, you found out too much. Nick has a big fight. And it looks like the guy is crushed by the Iron Maiden, uh, Past secret passageway. It's not super clear here. I think they may have went back and I, I don't know, re-edited or rewrote some of the dialogue, whatever. But basically, Nick kind of explains <coughs> in this almost Scooby Doo-ish type of way that hey, you know, that guy that we saw is not really a ghost. That was Mr. Minecraft. He's trying to scare all you people away because basically underneath the castle. Is this old secret Nazi fortress, okay? <laughs> All right, cause why not? And then all the truth is revealed and we found out that Rachel is the daughter of the old guy who died and, and now she's going to inherit the castle and the other lady goes, it's implied they go out for coffee or something or another or whatever, I don't know. And then here's the next story. This is the second part of the day Today the Earth died. Basically, Nick is fighting somebody that's supposed to be an alien. He's this great golden god looking man. But Nick gets into it with him and he knocks off the guy's headband. And the headband makes the uh, golden Adonis guy turn into his true form. Which is this weird quirky alien looking person. And he's got tentacles and, and globs and, and all this kind of crazy stuff. And, um, <coughs> and just crazy, mind-blowing stuff. Here's, uh, in, you know, the, the creature's like, hey, you know, you just can't stop me. You're too late. I'm taking over to Earth, and there's going to be death and destruction. Look at this. We get this collage happening here. And then what happens is we, uh, <laughs> we cut to the next page. It's all over. It's all over. And then Dum Dum Dugan shows up. And he just wakes up Nick Fury and he tells him, oh, it was all a dream. Ta -da -da -da. 
Okay, so that's it. Uh, Nick, or not Nick Fury, Jim Steranko was a very, very interesting guy. Part of the reason why, well, even though he only worked for in comics a short while, I don't think. Uh, Dick, eh, what do I want to say here? We'll, we'll say a relatively short while. He made such a big impact because, again, it's the late 60s and lots of crazy things were going on within art and culture and things like that. And um, Jim Steranko was not afraid to play around with like layouts and design and, and panel composition and things like that. And he kind of broke the mold. <clears throat> and, you know, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> bringing in, like I said, influences from commercial art, pop rock, pop rock, pop art, uh, cinema. So that's, that's kind of reason why he's so revered today. So, um, so that's it. I mean, you see some people try to kind of ape his style, but that all they ever kind of get is this kind of shallow sort of approximation. They don't really get into the field of how he, like I said, they, they don't have his imagination or his sense of, a, you know, they, uh, I don't even know what word I want to use. They basically, they, they don't understand what he was pulling from to get, like I said, his sense of pacing and design and whatnot. They're able to get that surface approximation, but they don't get to the meat of it. So, all right, so then that's it. That's, uh, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. And you have a good day.